This is a brief overview of the new major and minor features introduced in Vapor 3.3, which will be released by the end of 2020. This is going to be a very brief uh, overview of these tools. So if you find yourself a little behind or you're not sure how I got to the place where I went while demonstrating these features in Vapor, I'm going to put a link to tutorial videos that you can watch at the bottom of this that will hopefully catch you up to understand better what I'm doing and, and why I'm doing it uh, when I demonstrate these new features. But first, I'm going to talk about them. The new major features are, uh, first, we have new flow renderer appearance settings. Uh, previously, our flow renderer was a little bit primitive, and so we've added some new uh, tools and tricks that allow you to make uh, more compelling flow visualizations. Secondly, we've added a new scientific tool that allows users to sample data points along their flow lines and path lines, so, um, and, and streamlines. So for example, if you look at the tornado on the right, if you wanted to query the uh, reflectivity value, at each point along each one of these streamlines, you can now write those values to a comma-separated text file and use that for post-analysis. And it doesn't have to be dbz, it can be any variable you want. Uh, the last major feature we've added is an experimental uh, volume renderer called Osprey, which is an Intel-based uh, volume renderer that runs on the CPU, which can do things like uh, it can render 3D in-pass data, which we were not able to do before. So it complements our GPU-based renderers very well in that regard. And that will continue to be developed in the future. So keep your eyes peeled if you're interested in that one for future incremental releases. Some of the minor features are we've added 24 new color maps from the CM Ocean Matplotlib library. So we've gone from 12 to now 36 color maps, and I think we plan on continuing to expand uh, these palettes in the future. And we've also added input limit and format controls on our sliders. So previously, our sliders would have predefined values that uh, you, were you were restricted to. A slider might go from 0 to 5, and if you wanted to go up to 6, you weren't allowed to do that. So uh, with this new feature, you can right-click on the slider, you can map modify its minimum and maximum values, and you can also change the way that the text box next to the slider is displaying its data. So if you have a really, really precise, maybe like you know, 50 digits in your in your number, you can make it more uh, easy to work with uh, by modifying the settings in this menu. So with all that being said, I'm going to open up Vapor by clicking on it at the bottom. I've already installed Vapor 3.3, so I'll click on Vapor down here. And the first thing I'm going to do is import our canonical tornado data set, our CM1 data. So I'll import these main control files. And I'll create a new flow renderer by clicking on new, double click flow. And again, if I'm going too fast, guys, there's uh, tutorials on how to get to where I am. So I'll, again, I'll link to those at the bottom. The first thing I'm going to do is enable it. And I'm going to distribute my seeds to the bottom of my domain. So I'm going to reduce my rake region on the z-axis down to the bottom and I'll turn on my region box so you guys can more easily see where I'm distributing my seeds. Right now I'm distributing a 5 by 5 by 1 set of seeds on my x, y, and z axes. So the next thing I'm going to do, instead of using these sliders, I'm going to right click on this box and I'm going to drag this seed region in so now I have five, a 5x5 five five grid of seeds being pulled into the tornado. And I think, let's see, maybe I can bump my x seeds to 10. Whoops, I should do 5 on x. And let's do 10 on y. So I don't know, it's something, but good enough for demonstration purposes. So off the bat, you can already see that the tubes are much thicker than they were in Vapor 2, which I have open over here. In Vapor 2, uh, this is just one seed being drawn, but the, the flow lines were being drawn in a very primitive way that didn't allow for thickness or any kind of 3D uh, geometry to them. So now with the new appearance settings, I can go to my appearance tab. And let me turn off my red region box, get that out of the way. Okay, so we have these new settings in our appearance tab. Uh, we have new renderer types, uh, tubes, samples, and I'll talk a little bit more about this KLG WTH algorithm. It's kind of like a, it applies a density field to the, uh, the coloring of the streamline. But I'm going to start with tubes, enable 3D geometry, and 
Oops, looks like I didn't click it. There we go. So now you can see I'm actually looking at what seem to be three-dimensional tubes. I can increase the scalar and decrease it, and it interactively resizes itself. Very nice feature. And I can also show the streamlined direction by turning arrows on and off. I can also fade the flow tails. So um, right now, the beginning of my flow of my streamlines is uh, faded out. And what that allows me to do is I can animate this in a, in a steady state fashion. So part of the streamline is being faded out, and I can control which parts are being faded out uh, with these new controls. Uh, you can fade it over a different number of samples. And it's, it's kind of a fun tool just, just to play with if you're looking for some kind of uh, animation effect with your steady state streamlines. Another renderer type is samples, where it's kind of just dots on a line. You can also play with the scalar. Um, and I guess I'll mo move on to KLGWTH, which, let's see, there we go. So with this one, you can kind of see where the streamlines, here, I'll turn off the fade flow tails real quick. You can see where the streamlines are kind of disperse. Um, they're darker, and as they converge with each other, they, are, uh, they get a, a lighter texture applied to them. So another kind of cool feature to look at. Um, let's see, I think that covers most of the new flow appearance settings, which I don't know, are a great improvement over Vapor 3.2. I think our flow renderings are really going to pop and come to life uh, in this new release. Um, I also mentioned the flow renderer sampling feature, which if I go to my seeding tab, what I'm able to do is now write that comma separated text file with these controls down here, uh, write flow lines to file. My target file by default is in my home directory called vaporflow.txt, and you can change that if you like, but that's good enough for me right now. And like I said earlier, I can click on dbz, my simulated reflectivity, write it to a file, and then let's see. I'll just do a quick vi on my home directory, vaporflow.txt, uh, and here we can see uh, the CSV file with the streamline ID. Uh, the X position, Y position, Z position, the time, and the DBZ value. And so our streamline zero has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten samples. And streamline one will also have ten samples. And so each one is designated with an ID, and each position is designated uh, in each uh, CSV column following. Finally, Osprey. This is an experimental renderer, um, and it doesn't it doesn't look the same as our current volume renderer, which um, may improve in the future. But sometimes uh, users don't have an option, such as with impasse data. There's no uh, way to use our volume renderer on impasse data, so uh, Osprey is an alternative. And here we have our Osprey uh, volume rendering. And off the bat, you can tell that it is a little bit different from our uh, normal renderer. If I enable that one on a regular ray tracing algorithm, you know, it looks it looks pretty different. That's just because the uh, ray tracing algorithms for the two different engines are written differently. But um, the the silver lining is that if you're working with unstructured data like impasse, you have an option now to uh, do a volume rendering, which works in a more or less the same way as um, our, our previous volume renderer with the transfer function with uh, color and opacity settings being applied uh, in the same way. So those are our major features, the new uh, flow appearance settings, the uh, seed data sampling text file output, and the Osprey volume renderer. The minor features that we mentioned were the new color palettes, which I'll briefly show. Uh, to select a different color palette, you can click on the gearbox, and you can load these built-in color maps. We have diverging, highlighting color maps, and sequential. And you can just go ahead and pick whichever one you like. And again, we'll probably expand on those more in the future. And the last feature was the ability to modify these uh, slider edits, as we call them, by uh, right-clicking them. And you can enable scientific notation, if you like, reduce the precision, and edit the minimum and maximum values like that. So if something doesn't have good defaults, uh, you're at liberty now to make changes to them. 
Uh, before I go, there was one last thing I wanted to mention, which is what I'm uh, referring to as invisible features. These are things that the user is really not going to notice, and that's a good thing because uh, they all are conducive to a better user experience for Vapor. We have a new GUI architecture, which streamlines the way that uh, the GUI is implemented, which leads to fewer bugs, um, more capabilities, more consistency in the code base. So that's great to have. We also have new optimizations in Vapor's internal data management system, the image and flow renderers. So you will have a more snappy user experience thanks to those optimizations. And as always, when we release, we update the third-party libraries so we can stay up to date with what we are using. So with all that said, if anyone has questions, I'll put a link to our discourse forum at the bottom. I'll link to our documentation. And of course, I'll link to the download for Vapor 3.3. But please uh, hit us up on our discourse forum and uh, let us know what you think with new requests and features. And if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in more tutorials on Vapor 3.3 and future versions, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.